All right, friends, back in the forest again. Here we are, spring abundance is all around, and it's that time of the year where the growing edges are everywhere. Every little plant friend we know is putting out its little feelers to see, how's the world out there? Seems good. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at some of these plants, just get a feel for them from the like total lay blind point of view without medicinal uses, but how do we use our body to register the chemistry that we see in these medicines? Now, this might not just be trying to use it therapeutically for a specific condition. It's more about this whole larger tonic effect that we get when we connect deeper with plant medicine. And just how you might read a book to learn knowledge, well, guess what your body does? It reads the chemistry of what you put inside of you. That's how it picks up information from the world around it. That's how it adapts and modulates and tones itself to be more functional, more resilient, and more vital. So let's look around us and see what we can see. <laughs> This energy is flourishing right now where we can just feel everybody pop, 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 pop. Lots of baby trees, big trees, but it's these growing tips that we're gonna look at. This is a grand fir, and grand fir has a delicious leaf. Right here, it's got flat leaves. We know firs are flat, spruces are square, and pines are pointy. The grand fir has one of the most delicious leaves. So we might take these older ones. Mmm, nice lemony scent, strong punch, good flavor. I can taste some tannins, some astringents, some things that are tightening my tissues, but some aromatics that are gonna open me up and help me breathe better. When you see the difference between these darker ones and these baby ones, you can see, just feeling it, this is so much lusher. Mm, try that out now. So much less medicinal compounds in here, which basically is telling me that here's a food, whereas this one is a medicine. Simply, I can use my nibbler or my taste buds, just like a sommelier might roll around a glass of wine. We're gonna use that, kind of breathe it in, nibble it up, get some aromatics, get a feel, use that nibbler to tell us what kind of chemistry we're registering in our bodies. I got my handy dandy harvesting bag and we're gonna harvest a few of these, just these spring tips. Think about the growing edges. These have not had enough time to really produce their medicinal compounds, so they become more like a food, right? Plants produce medicinal compounds to protect them from herbivores like ourselves. That is why they have all these compounds and also to improve their immune system, send out chemical signals and repel insects. There's all kinds of reasons. When they're young like this, they don't have a lot of those medicinal compounds. So we're gonna harvest some of these young tips and put them in our salad. Now I'm not gonna harvest all of them because I wanna let this guy get a chance to kind of grow out. Do you guys know this plant? This is vanilla leaf. Now I know it's not a food, but I'm gonna try to find the youngest bits and see if there's anything edible on here. One thing I know is that pollens are often very safe, delicious, and full of nutrition. We're gonna take these little bits of flowers right there. Hmm. Now I've never eaten this before, but you know why I'm not afraid of it? Because I'm using my nibbler to tell me whether this is safe or not. Now I can tell these fresh flowers are a gentle enough food that I can kind of register what's going on. I may not ever eat huge volumes of this, but I'm infusing my body with the plant intelligence of what this one happens to represent. Vanilla leaf is one of those plants that's a great ground cover in all these type of mixed forests. It works to help protect the mycelium in there by giving it shade, but it also feeds off of a lot of the, the nutritional benefits that these trees are giving us. If I'm gonna try the leaf, always pick out the young, supple, tender ones. Hmm. Wow, no, that's actually pretty good. Because I haven't ever eaten this, I'm gonna be cautious. Who knows if in like a half an hour or so, I wanna go, oh, that was a little weird. So always when I'm trying new things, I wanna just try a little bit. I'll save a little for later. I'm gonna give it a taste. Now also, rather than even eat it, I usually chew on it and suck the juices back and be like, hmm. So in this case, I've still got a good amount of the vanilla leaf herp matter here and I've just sucked on the juices to get a deeper feel for if this is something I could eat as a food or if it's something I should leave in the forest. And sucking the juices, I can taste that I got a little bit of astringency in my mouth. Uh, it hits me at the back of my palate. And so it's telling me, you know, that's something that you might wanna just use small amounts of. So after about like a minute or so of trying this vanilla leaf, I can feel it like spicy almost going up into my top of my palate. This is telling me definitely got some more medicinal or anti-herbivore compounds. So I'm not gonna eat any more of this one. What else can we find? This is so exciting. One of my favorite plants is this 
massive one on the hill here, the Oregon grape. We've talked about it in other videos where we show you how to use the medicinal compounds found in the root. You see this yellow part? That contains the barberini, which is the active compounds that help increase better quality mucus in the mucous membranes and also work as an antibacterial. So we can use it for coughs or gut inflammation or all kinds of other things. Wow. And just to register in with this plant and try a little bit of bitter, that is such a flavor. These right here, my son calls nature's popcorn. Why? Because they pop, 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 pop right off the, the top. Yeah, give it a try. So this has like a sweet and sour mixed in all together. Mmm. This one has a really nice texture to it. Great mouthfeel, you know, you can get that kind of crunch where there's a bit of sour and a bit of sweet flavor. They're only good for about a two to three week window in the spring. But man, are they ever tasty. Tell you the story, my son, after school, picks a handful of these just outside of his school and he puts them in a little bag and eats them all the way home. He calls them nature's popcorn because they're like literally his little snack that he's just munching on him. I couldn't believe it. At first I was like, are you sure? But no, sure enough, day after day, 20 to 40 of these flowers just as a snack. What's the difference between this young and open flower and this closed flower? Do you know? Well, I don't, but my tongue does. Hmm, more sour, more sweet. So these open flowers have a little more sweet to them. And I think that's just the nectar and the pollens attracting the pollinators. So you know, when you're going for just the spring tips, it might take a bit of time to actually get enough food to eat. But just think about how our ancestors used to live. Most of their time was spent preparing and harvesting and collecting the foods that they were gonna eat. In the modern world, we don't get much time to pick our food because we're too busy dialed into our pocket gods, doing our internet, doing our communications to actually delve deeper into this type of communication. Slowing down and giving thanks and appreciation the that that nourishes us. So as we come to the edge of an ecosystem, we'll start to see the forest change. Now, this is an artificial edge because that area past there has been clear cut. But we're gonna start to look for a difference in diversity of the plant growth that we see here. I look at these salal leaves and I see, okay, the energy is in this growing tip. So I'm gonna peel that back and see if there's anything worth eating there. Mmm, pretty puckery. This huckleberry bush just got its flowers right here. Other than being full of insects, which are also nutritious, they've got lots of pollen in them. That is gonna be super nutritionally dense too. And tasty, man. So I'm gonna take a little bit of those huckleberries and just pop some of them back. Mmm. It's like when you go to the buffet, but this is that all you can eat forest buffet. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a salmonberry flower. And what I've noticed this year, these little petals are pretty good, but once I get past the petals, all that's left is a stamen. And you know what? This stamen right here, that is delicious. So I'm gonna take that and just like pop that back. Wow, all this juice in there. Mmm. That's where like the honey is. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Most flower buds, we see the honey or the nectar right in that stamen bit. So I'll just. I eat that bit out. Mm. High grading, herbal high grading, we call this. Wow, salmon berry haven. Mm. Now I should be leaving some of these. You see this? It's just about started. Oh, I'm gonna try one little nibble off of that. Now I know these are gonna be tart because these berries aren't mature yet, but hmm, just get a feel. What I might try to do with a berry like that is eat around the outside. All those stamen. Hmm. Not so bad. So as we walk through the forest, we want to just keep our wide angle vision going, right? Where we're looking and looking and seeing what we can see. Because things might pop out all of a sudden. We're like, oh, bleeding hearts. Now I know this one's not a food, so I want to be careful with it. But I am going to just expose this bleeding heart here for a second and see what I can find in that flower for a little nibble. Wow. Mmm. That's got some sweetness to it too. The nectar of these flowers is pretty sweet. Hmm. But I'm cautious with this one. 
I can taste a little bit of a bitterness to it. Bitter sometimes is really healing for the body, but also can signify that there's some kind of toxin or poison in here. So I know this one's good for the heart, but what I'll do is I'll take a couple home or I'll just remember this plant and I'll do a little bit of research when I get home to make sure that I got something that I can get more curious with later on. Some of you at home might be asking, you know, I'm not a herbalist. I don't know about these plants. I'm cautious when I get out of the forest. And something that I just want to share with you is in small volumes like this, for plants like this, we can use our nibbler just to taste a little bit. And if we sense those bitter compounds, phew, spit it out. You know, make sure you don't eat a whole volume of things you don't know about. But it is important to get a taste for these. This is how all animals learn about the world around them. They give a little tibble. Maybe that's food, maybe that's not. If it tastes good, if it's sweet, and um, has very little of those medicinal compound flavors, then we know it's usually a food. Now, if it has bitter compounds, that's probably the biggest one that is toxic, is those bitter compounds. So that's really plant's way of telling herbivores, stay away, I'm protected, this is how I'm protecting myself. Many of these plants have a lot of those oxalic acids too as they get older. So the younger the tips of the plants, the better it is for you to experiment with and try. So spring is a great time for us to just kind of get a feel. These young tips are delicious. There's very few plants out here that we can't at least experiment with. Some of the ones are the ferns. This is a lady fern. Now the sword fern, which is right behind you, let's have a quick look at that for a second. It's got these long sword-like leaves. The shoots come up and then twist back down into that almost fill head look. That is not an edible. But these lady ferns back here, once they're big like this, they're not really a food. We could what's called paraboil this, which means lightly simmer it and then throw out the first batch of water and then lightly simmer it again. But what we're gonna look for is the baby bits, right? There's a brand new fiddlehead. Mmm. Now that is definitely more food-like. It's crisp, and yet it hasn't had a chance to build up that base of oxalic acids to be more toxic and protected from herbivores. So this is our West Coast fiddlehead. We'd normally lightly simmer these, maybe throughout the water, maybe not, but then we might give them a little fry up with butter and they're delicious. Oh, I'm just gonna eat one fresh here like this just to kind of get a feel. Now what I'm noticing are mucilaginous compounds. Those are soothing, which is gonna tell me that it's good for inflammation of the gut. There's so much more in this tiny little path. We haven't even barely got started. This one here, love it. Gonna have to get out my hori hori for this one. Avon's root is one of those ones kind of in that strawberry family. And what we're looking for, now I'll give this, see this youngest tip? Might give that a taste. Mmm. Pretty fibery, not really a food, but I do know that I can take these roots and I'm gonna use my little hori hori here, pop them up, pull out that root. Best way, ah, either use moss to clean it, sometimes it's nice, like that. Or a little bit of in a stream or whatnot, but see these little roots? They have a nutmeg-like flavor. Very delicious, kind of a spice to them, so, hmm. I just love this one. Got that, mm, that like nutmeggy, cinnamony spice. So I could use this in a tea to make a really delicious, delicious food. They're everywhere along the sides of the road here. Spring is a great time where the roots just pop up easily. Now I want to do a bit of garbling, which means to pull off the things that are not the medicinal compounds or are not part of the plant we need. So in a sense, we're just gonna pull back. So we just got the root. Now there's a big one. You see this one, it's got a bit of a bigger root bulb, so we can actually cut into it and start to give that a nibble. All right. Hmm. Tastes like dirt. Oh, maybe that's just the dirt on the root I didn't wash off. But I hear dirt helps you grow, so take it from the trees, dirt helps you grow. Hmm. So the bigger piece is less spicy than these little root tendrils. So I think these little root tendrils have more chi, more energy in them. This is more storage starch. So depending on what we're looking for, if it were the winter and we didn't have that opportunity, we'd be eating that. But I'm gonna use these tendrils to spice up my little dish here. But I'll put them right in my big bag because they're gonna need cleaning and processing later. Here's some peppercrest. Now this is pretty common here on the west coast. It's 
It's got this kind of arugula-like leaf, right? This is in that mustard family, and arugula is in that family as well. And all these mustards are super edible and usually quite delicious in the spring like this. Oh man, that's probably more tasty than anything we've found so far. I just love, 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 love this one. There's two in here, but the one I'm looking at right now is this one. This is a Siberian miner's lettuce. The name lettuce gives it away. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. I really hope we find more of this one. It's in my top foods for eating in the wild. And there's a few different kinds of miner's lettuce. There's the one that has with the flowers and the stems popping right out of the center of it. When you find a plant like this, scout out and see what kind of area you found it in. Then try to mirror that in other places or just keep looking. Like here, as I come along, I got all kinds of Siberian miner's lettuce. So we're gonna put those ones there. Harvest a few more. Harvest one more little bunch. So, this one's just lovely. This is the elderflower. Now, we're not gonna eat much of this. I know this entire plant is poisonous. Now I could, them on the leaf, but I'm not gonna risk it really. Just, just wanna show you that. But what I would, would like, is some of these flowers. Now if I just rub it, what you'll see is that the flowers just come off in my hands. Usually I use this as a gentle tea. It's kind of got that diaphoretic, it's called. The diaphoretic quality is to help us sweat and perspire and remove a flu. It's also antiviral, so it's gentle and cooling to heat, which can be used in the hot summer days, but also, so we make a cordial with this, it's just delicious, but also there's lots of pollen in there. So I'm just gonna filter through and I'm gonna nibble on. Oh. If anything, Sometimes instead of feeding our mouth, we just want to feed our nose with that that chemistry So I'm just gonna Sit here and huff on some elderflowers for a bit Definitely check out the elderflower video and the elderflower cordial video for more on this plant But know that it's one of our favorites here on the West Coast There's a lot of folklore around elder all over the world Especially with the Divic Kingdom and the Elven and just the gentleness of this flowers Great for kids, great for summer heat, and just great at making a syrup or a cordial or immune support. So, oh man, oh my gosh. So we could just snap it like that if we wanna harvest the flower. And usually I use a fork and I will pull it back like this on the fork, leaving the big stem, because that's where our less poisonous compounds are, which are in the leaves and in the branches. That's our elderflower. You guys know this one? Poor man's Velcro? Haha. <laughs> so when you see these big shoots like this, this is the biannual called burdock. And these are the big burr shoots. Down here, we got lots of little burdocks. This is challenging. It's really easy to break the burdock and not get the whole thing. I'm gonna dig around it. I've learned enough about burdock that giving yourself a bit of space and digging around the plant is definitely worth doing first off because it's so easy to pull those roots back and miss a line. I'm afraid I'll cut it right off the bat. Well, well, we did cut a bit. We got a pretty good amount of the root. It's just, I like using the backside of a knife to kind of scrape back things when I don't have a pond or something to clean it off in. Burdock at this age is not only useful like this, but these leaves and stems can be used as a pot herb. So we can cook these up. So I might peel back this outer layer here where I know that it's a little more tough and see if I can get to the tasty innards. Let's just give that a little nibble. Mmm, still pretty fibrous. That's gotta be cooked if I really wanna eat it. I'm gonna feel for it. And one some things I do is I'll just run things through my teeth and suck the juices up. I might not fully get to eat the plant fiber, but... Hmm. There we go. What I do think is gonna be really tasty is this root. So we're gonna harvest some of that up. Get that nice, fresh gobo. This is a Japanese vegetable. And we might lightly simmer this as well, but man. Mmm, 
even just fresh like that, oh my gosh. Nice and tender when they're young like this. Wow. This is one of the best alternatives for the blood, but it's also great for the liver and the kidneys. So it's got that one, two, three punch. Powerful medicine. There's lots, boom, of energy in this plant. A lot of chi in this one. So once you open up into a landscape like this, the plants change. You see how we've just kind of come into an open area? We've got this burdock, wild strawberry, but we also have wild daisies. All daisies have a delicious edible leaf. That is one of my favorites too. Now let's just have a quick look here. See this? Daisy, 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 daisy. We got the plantain, both the majoris and the lancelotta. You don't see those both side by side all the time. But we also have wild strawberries, some clover. We've got hairy cat's ear. It's kind of Velcro-y, but this is another one that can be made into a salad green. And when they're older, they're not as tasty. We, there's also a couple of dandelions in here too. But what we're gonna try and do is take a younger one, and because I don't like the hairs on the back of my throat, I mash it up. I don't eat a lot of these because they're kind of hairy and I feel like it's scratchy on the back of my throat, but a few of them, it's pretty tasty, I mean they taste good. So now as we're right here, we see these dandelions too. Big long ones. Remember I was talking shade growing ones. What I really like is these yellow parts right in here. Mmm. I also use this to make a dandelion mead or wine. Very simple. We can either harvest the whole thing and pop the heads off and then, then carve off the bottoms. But what I tend to do is get right into the middle with my knife and just pop out that bit. And there we go. Come along. This is a lactuca lettuce. Now you see they have this, this kind of um, white latex. This is full of opiates. Now in fact, this is one of the more potent opiate plants here on the West Coast. And what those do is they work with pain. They also slow down the digestion and make us feel fuller and more relaxed. So if we're having trouble sleeping or um, in a lot of pain, wild lettuce can sometimes be a good medicine. Now, different from your regular lettuce in the sense that this is gonna be bitter. Like when lettuce sprouts and goes full and it's kind of a little bitter, well, you're gonna get that in here. So a couple of sharp bitters in there. There's a, there's a big wild lettuce right there. It's your big wild lettuce. Right there. I could turn this into a tincture for pain or working with any kind of sleep disorder in that sense. Anxiety, nervous tension. Thank you for joining me for another herbal adventure. As you can see, there is so much in the wildlands that we can connect with, eat, start nibbling and nabbling and dibbling and dabbling on, and find ways to start aligning at a deeper level with. This is not only maximal nutrition and nutritional density, but it's also an education for our body on how to show up in the world. Remember not to eat things you think are too poisonous or that your tastes go whoa, 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 and spend some time researching, playing, uh, get curious about the world around you. All right, ciao for now, and please touch in with us further. Comment below on what you liked about this video, what you'd like to see different, what you'd like to know more about, or other things you'd like for us to share with you during this upcoming herbal season. We'll see you soon. Till the next time. Peru.